Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to take you on a tour of Lynx Whiteboard and show you all of the icons available to you when you're creating slides. At the moment I'm in the dashboard. This is what you see when you first open Lynx Whiteboard on any device. I'm also signed into my account that I've created with an email address. From here I could open files from my device or go straight to my Lynx Cloud um, or if I've got my Google Drive and OneDrive linked up or even Dropbox I can access files from there too. I also have uh, the open area to create brand new files and I've got a browser that I can open up so I can search for content. There are some interactive games and coming soon the ability to share a file live to an audience who can join in and collaborate with you. But we're going to concentrate on all of the icons within Lynx itself. So I've got a document ready here. So when we first come into Lynx this is what you'll see and you'll notice there aren't too many icons and we're, we're going to actually start in the middle here. So next to the hand which is our selector tool we have what I like to think of as a pencil case. So now that I'm in the pen icon I've got three pens and an eraser. Now these menus actually are exactly the same for all three pens. It's just that they've been set by default to these three starting ones. So if we just start here you'll see that I can start off with the ink pen and going to the other side here I can change the thickness of that pen and the colour of it too. So it's the ink pen again but this time red and you can see the ink pen has a nice sort of blotting effect as you use it. Now if we look at some of the other pen styles we have the fine tip which gives us that kind of more um, uniform line. We have a laser pen also by default always red but this one's different because of course like a real laser pen it won't stay on the screen. We also have highlighters so if I change the colour and the thickness I can highlight things very simply using that. And we'll go back here we have the rainbow pen very useful when teaching joined up handwriting. Stays the same colour with the nice joins but will change colour every time I lift the pen from the screen. The animated rainbow pen does exactly the same only this time it will definitely change colour as you're going so a nice effect. We also have the text pen now teachers love the text pen because you can set this to turn your handwriting into a font of your choice so there we go, that's the font that I've chosen and that is a live text box that I can click into and delete and change and correct. So for example if a child hand wrote a word and they misspelt it they were able to change the text to the correct word. Um, we also have here the shape recognition pen so with this I can do a terrible circle and it will convert it for me into proper circle, same with rectangles, triangles and other shapes. We also have the math recognition pen which if I just make it a little bit thinner with this I can start to write sums on the board, put an equal sign and for certain equations it will give us the answer hidden under a box. Okay. It will convert math symbols of all sorts as well so if I was doing x squared plus 7y equals 3 it will convert all that for me too. There we go so a lot more professional than my handwriting. And then we have the line curve and elbow pens and to demonstrate this I just need the line pen really so I can add a line to the screen and then if I want to change it into a curve pen or a, an angle pen I can do that easily. So I'm going to turn it into a curve pen so it gives me a point in the middle to make the line bendy. I can also add extra points to the line that I can slide around. 
So really handy. And if I was to change that to an angled line, you can see how useful that would be if you're plotting a graph. So those are all the various line tools. Now, anything that I've put onto the screen, I can select it um, as well, if I so, use the selector, and you'll notice that a floating toolbar comes up underneath. And this can help me change things depending on what symbol I'm using. So the crosshairs you'll see underneath anything, whether it's a text box or the shape, you always have the crosshairs on the left. This helps you move things around with a bit more accuracy than just sliding it around normally. You also have colouring tools, so I could change the line on this um, rectangle that I've created, but I can also fill it with a colour as well uh, there. Um, so, with the text here, you can see I've got the colour icon to change the colour of the ink. So all the changes are very quick and intuitive to find. You'll also find the... Um, let me just uh, see here, the arrange and transform icon. With this, I can do various things, such as bring things to the front. So this time when I drag this over here, it's going to sit on top of this rectangle. I could also send it to the background layer. I could rotate it as well if I wanted to, or flip it uh, too. So we can flip it and have a very strange looking uh, version of the word ink there. Also, we have an eye. You'll always have the eye, and with this, you can make things transparent to make them disappear. And we have the three dot menu, which allows us to do things like make a copy, cut something, bin it, or make an instant clone. So I've got an instant copy. And very quickly, you can see how we can keep doing that and getting lots of clones of whatever it is that we need to replicate. Also in there, we can have things ready for our presentation mode, such as turning them into a replicator, making them editable, or even turning them into a hyperlink. So let's move on. So I'm going to come down here now and go to the next slide. So now I'm on slide two of five, and we're gonna talk about the text boxes. So if I come out of my pencil case, I've now got some text boxes here. These are three default text boxes that I've set up in the settings area. If I tap on the settings tab, it takes us to an area where I can decide which fonts I'm going to use as my defaults. So number two here, if I don't want to use Open Sans, I can go to all of the various fonts on my device and pick a new one. So if I want to use Ravi there, I can choose what color it's going to be, whether or not it's going to be bold, italic or underlined as well. And then we can also sort out the text recognition pen from here as well. When we're done with sorting out our fonts, we just go back and you'll see the change straight away in here. So Ravy is the second one. So I would just click onto the screen and type and that would be my text box. Just to save time, I'm gonna talk about this text box that I've got already here. Um, so, you can see that, again, I've got the colour choices. I've also got a background choice that I can add to the text box. That will make me want to come in and pick a different colour there. But also, with the U underlined, I can jump to one of the other styles that we've got already, change the font entirely, make it bold and italic and so on, um, centralise all the text as well, and mess around with the size from here. But because I'm working on a touch screen, I can do that nice and easily anyway, just with my hand. And if I'm doing something and I don't like what I've just done, over here on the right, we've got the undo and redo buttons. And of course, I have a bin as well, so I can drag things to the bin if I don't want them anymore. So those are the uh, text boxes there. Now, one thing uh, to mention back in the pencil case is that I have an eraser. So if I was writing on top of some content that I've brought onto the screen, so let's say I'm going to use this pen and make a nice red line and I'm writing on the screen here and then I decide I don't want that writing anymore, we have the eraser in there so I can erase and anything that I've left in the background is protected. Now we also have here what looks like a, a scalpel and in here are the fill and crop tools. So we'll start off with the fill tool. So with the fill tool, I can choose a 
a colour that I'd like to have in the background. So I might choose this yellow and I just tap on the background and it will immediately change it. I can go to the wheel here and tinker with it some more and change the colour. I can even pick a colour with this little pipette. So I might pick the brown off the Gruffalo here and then use that as the background colour on the screen too. So we can really help the Gruffalo camouflage if we can remove his background here. Um, so we've also got the ability to pick the transparency colour. So if I tap on this area of the Gruffalo here between his hand and his chin, that will get rid of that little bit of white for me there. If I want to get rid of the rest of the background, I can do exactly the same. Just tap and it will go. Alternatively, there is a tool that comes in the floating toolbar. So um, if I select the Gruffalo and we can see that we've got a uh, kind of raindrop image with a line through it, that is our remove background tool. You can also see that with the picture of the Gruffalo we have some different icons. So I can't change the colours of the image, but I can zoom in so we can have a closer look at our um, picture. And I can also turn it into a panoramic picture. Works a lot better, of course, if the picture is a nice landscape, but it's doing okay with the Gruffalo there as well. And we can lock that, that view in as well with the icon next to it. Um, so we won't make him panoramic anymore. So having a look there next at the block highlighter. The block highlighter is a really useful tool because it means that instead of just um, highlighting text with a messy pen, we can drag this over whole paragraphs. So a really great way for teachers to segment uh, different paragraphs in a piece of text. Also, I can select these and using the eye that I showed earlier, I can make those uh, kind of filters even more uh, transparent to help the children read what's underneath. Very useful if you have dyslexic children that read under a particular type of filter. So going back here, I can pick a totally different colour and highlight the next paragraph a different shade and again mess around with the, the transparency of it. Then we've got some crop tools. Now there are four crop tools. Um, the first one is the crop rectangle. So with this, I can drag this across a paragraph of my letter and it makes a copy that comes on top of the screen and I can shrink that down and do various things with it. The next one is the crop freehand. So with this, I can just start drawing on my letter, picking an area of the letter that I'm interested in and again it makes a copy that it places on top. The next one is called the knife. So with the knife, I can do something terrible. We're going to just take the Gruffalo's head off. Let's say we want to use that to make a nice little icon introducing him. And there we are, we've removed his head from his shoulders, the poor Gruffalo. There is also the shape split. Now, to demonstrate the shape split, it'd be good if I had a shape here. Now, to do that, we're gonna go into the additional part here and there is an insert shape option. I just want to grab a rectangle, a blue one is fine, and I want to grab a circle as well, but this time I will go over here and I'll pick a different color, um, and we'll just drag a circle on as well. And now we're gonna go back to our crop tools, to the shape split. Now with the shape split in the rectangle, if I go down, I get rows, and I go across, I get columns. If I do the same, with the shape split in a circle, move my finger around and I split the shape into pizza slices. Let go when I'm done. And there we have all the separate pieces that I can pull out. And again, very quickly, the little floating toolbar comes up so we can make changes to the colors and so on. You'll notice that the icons that come up depend on the type of um, object. So for example, because this is something where we can change the angle, we have the angle selectors here. So we can decide, are we looking at a piece of pie? Are we just looking at an arc? Do we want to um, see the measurements written in there as well? So all this kind of extra data can be pulled in depending on the item that we're looking at. Another really useful feature is I can drag across multiple items all at once. 
So all these separate pieces, I can now recombine them with a new icon, which are the arrows all coming together here. Each of these, though, is still separate. I can tap in there and turn it into a really handy table. Uh, so turn each of these boxes into a text box as well. Um, if I want to split these up again, if I decide actually I don't want them all to be joined, I can do so uh, as well very easily using the reverse icon. Um, so those are the uh, crop tools. Now we've already dipped here our toe into the um, plus sign here, so we're going to have a, a much closer look at all of the additional features. So for example, we can... Um, Go in and edit the background layer. You'll see me do that in a moment. We can look at page options. And as well as insert shape, we have the content area. And that's where I want to go first. The content area has two main parts, the media search and the local content. In the media search, I've already typed in something I want to look for, the moon. And I can go to images of the moon and just drag those out. It might come onto the screen rather large, but that's absolutely fine. And while we're here, I'm going to tick to say that's the image I want. I'm even going to remove the background from it as well. Let's go back. We've got other websites where we can choose things from. So I might go to the clip art option and drag an image of the moon out there. Again, it might come onto the screen rather large, but just shrink it down. It's absolutely fine. And we can even search for YouTube videos as well. And the great thing about this is that when you pull out a video on a topic here, it will take away the adverts that you usually get before any YouTube video and it won't jump to the next video afterwards as well. So we'll just leave that to um, embed the link onto this, this page for us. Okay, we've also then got the local content. Now the local content has lots of helpful features. So we've got some backgrounds that we've given to you already such as a grid. When I drop the grid onto the screen, I can tailor it so I don't have to stick with this size. So if I go to the T symbol here, it gives me a slider so I can make the squares larger or just to show you how small we can get them. Okay, so we can do that very easily there. I can also change uh, the thickness of the lines themselves and the uh, color of those lines too, if I need to. When I tap away from there, though, I can't touch the background again now unless I go into the background layer, which is where we'll go in a few minutes. Let's go home. Again, we're still in the local content. We've got various folders of resources. So in the geography one, for example, we've got flags of countries of the world that you can pull out as you need them. And there are also things like um, weather symbols in here that you can pull out too. Um, We've got math resources. So we've got things like an interactive protractor. Again, they come with their own set of tools and so on here that you can toggle on or off. Um, we've got uh, rulers, really nice to use on a touch screen. Uh, we've also got compasses and dice and some interactive clocks and even an interactive calendar. So check those out. And then we've also got shortcuts to folders on your device so you can make links to certain folders on your device that you'd like to jump to and pull content out of so for example if i go to my demo folder here and i go to my documents i've got a pdf here if i drag the pdf onto the screen and drop it on this is an eight page pdf i can really shrink it down onto the page but when i'm ready i can go into it like we did with the picture earlier, and I can go through all eight pages of this PDF easily and then shrink back out of it when I need to. So I've got a lot of content on here now. There is also the My Content or the CCA folder where you can actually create your own library of resources as well. So for example, in the maths area that I've been creating, I've got things like money. So I've got coins and notes that I can drag out whenever I need them. 50 pound notes, don't see enough of those in my life. Okay, so that's the content area. Now, I did talk about editing the background layer. 
But before I go to the background layer, I'm going to send some of these things to that area. So let's say that I'd like this moon to go to the background area. So in the Arrange and Transform, I can just send it that quickly to the background layer. Now here I am in the background layer. I know that because it's got the exit background option. I can't now touch any of the other things, but you'll notice I can now mess around with the grid that I put on. Because I'm in the background layer, I can mess around with that again. And I can, of course, mess around with the moon because that's the object I sent there. If I send one more thing to the background layer, I'll send this 50p here to the background layer and we'll exit again. Now it means that I can't now select the moon or the 50p on the page, but everything else that's on the upper layer, I can. Now, if I go back to my pen and activate the eraser, you'll notice the eraser cannot touch the grid or the moon, but it can erase pretty much anything else on the page, unless it's been sent to the background layer and is protected. Now, using those arrange tools, I can also layer things. So for at, the, at the moment here, this hat for SpongeBob goes behind his head. That's not that useful. So in the arrange area, I can bring the hat forwards. So now it will pop onto his head. And the moustache, again, I need to bring that forward as well. So arrange, drag that on there. And I can even select all those things, join them together so that SpongeBob is dressed up and ready to go wherever he wants to be. Now, we can also get things ready in here for the delivery mode. So let's say that this protractor, I want to use it when I'm presenting. So I'm going to make it editable while presenting. SpongeBob here, I also want him to move around. So I go to the menu here and I make him editable. Let's say that uh, this raindrop, I actually want to make it rain on the page. So from the three dot menu, I'm going to choose replicator so I can have lots of those. Um, and the 50 pound note here, um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to turn that into a link to the next slide. So select slide and we go in there and we say, okay. So let's go and have a look at the pre presentation or the delivery mode. So I come to the hamburger menu and I select start presenting. So now I can only do things to the things I've given a job to. So the moon here I can't touch, the video I, I can zoom in on, and, but I can't do anything to it because I didn't give it a job. But the 50 pound note, remember, is my link to the next slide. The raindrops are on a replicator, so I can pull out many, many copies of those. This was editable, so I can move it around on the screen, and so was SpongeBob. And just to test out that link by pressing on the 50 pound note, here we are on the next page. I'm going to stop presenting now. It's asking me, do I want to keep the changes I made while presenting? Usually the answer will be no, so that your presentation is preserved. And the last thing to show you is the slide viewer, and that lives here next to the arrows I've been using to navigate. So with this slide viewer, this is where I can have a look at my background options. So on this page here with the white background, I can decide I actually want to change that color background very easily there. I can also decide that whatever color I put in there, let's pick the lighter green, I can go into background options and I can apply that background to all the existing pages, as I've just done, or I can apply it to any new pages that I use. I can also make sure that I create other pages either before or after the page that I'm on. I can delete pages, I can copy pages, and I can duplicate pages as well. So there's a, a new copy of the same page. It's really handy to be able to copy pages and drop them into other presentations as well. Now I can slide up and down through my pages that I've created, but also I've got these arrows here that will help me change the order of my slides if I decide that I need to do that. And finally, I've got this chain link option and that allows me to make flow links between slides. So on my last slide here, if I drag down slide five onto there, and I just move that out of the way, and I can drag slide uh, three down here as well, and move that out of the way, and even slide one, uh, but uh, slide two rather, but instead of dra dragging it onto there, I'm just gonna drop it straight onto the page. So now I've got three um, 
slide links back to the other pages. So if we go into uh, the presentation mode, I can now choose where I want to go. So we could go back here to slide two, and we can carry on through. And if you remember, we've got our hyperlink that takes us back to this slide, and then I can go back here. So it's a really nice system to be able to create links and a nice flow system through the various pages. So that's a basic tour of all the main tools that you've got and all the kind of creation that you can um, produce on a clever touch screen.